In this music production tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to make techno like Boris Brescia and the final result sounds like this. Hi, my name is Vlad and I help electronic music producers transform their ideas into commercial club bangers. Don't forget to grab my free cheat sheet called 7 things you don't need to become a music producer and let's get started with the tutorial. So as usual, we're going to start with the low end and let me play you the bass line, just a kick and the bass. Uh, this is a really nice rolling kind of bass line and uh, as you guys can see uh, it is eight bars long uh, here and here because uh, I have a slightly different variation at the end of uh, of my loop so this one here and this one here they are different so let me guys uh, explain the concept on the paper as you guys can see now it doesn't have any variation in the notes so basically it's just the the rolling bass line uh, let's pretend that these are the 16th notes and what we want to do we want to add some variation so for example here we can add like another note here we can add uh, one more note uh, and at the end of the loop we can do I don't know just add some some more notes but the main concept here is that you should have variation uh, yeah it's okay sometimes just to use like the uh, the root notes of the track but it, it can sound boring and uh, I'm sure this is not what you want and if you look here uh, you can see that I have like a variation here 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 and here as well and one more cool thing you can do you can make two uh variations so this one is five bars long and this one is five bars long as well but as i mentioned they have uh, a different like ending variation and this one and one more cool thing you can do you can add uh, a like bass fills breeze bass and uh, it sounds like this really wide really nice and together with the kick and the bass it sounds like this so basically what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to stack different elements in this example it's going to be a bass because without layering it can sound boring and when you stack different elements you will get more complex sound right complex and this is what we are looking for. So yeah, uh, this is what you can do. And this is what Boris Brescia does uh, very often. Uh, he layers his bases. And at the end of the loop, he introduces some like fills, lead fills, bass fills, just something, something new. So it makes the track more interesting for the listener. So all right, guys, I hope you get the idea with the bass line. And uh, let's maybe talk a little bit about the processing. Uh, for the processing, I'm just using a amp. It's Ableton stock plugin. Uh, without the processing, it sounds like this. With the amp and the erosion. It sounds fatter. Yeah, really cool. One. And now let's break down the uh, rhythm the drums in this track, uh, what I've noticed is that usually in techno, we have uh, the repeating kind of like lead sound, effect sound, just something that plays uh, over and over again. So in this example, it's uh, this uh, perk effects and it sounds like this. As you guys can hear, it adds atmosphere to the track. So for example, uh, uh, let's say that this is gonna be our track or the loop. And uh, if it's just, you know, empty without anything, it can be boring. But basically what we are trying to do, we are trying to add some elements like here, here and here. Uh, and these elements, they play 
uh, over and over again, thus creating a nice vibe and uh, making the track more interesting, more complex, because w without this sound, it, it would sound really boring. All right, so uh, the next thing is uh, this effects hat. Basically, it's just like a hat layer to make my hats more powerful, and it sounds like this. So yeah, nothing really that's fancy and complicated. Uh, let me show you the hats. Uh, so for the hats, it's just usual offbeat hats you can hear in house music and techno and other genres. And this is the main hat sound. And I also have uh, the right symbol that plays together with the kick. Because usually in techno, it's really, really a common thing that you have uh, your ride playing together with your kick. But you can also do something like this. But uh, Boris Brasher does that really often. Because it really changes the vibe. Yeah? And uh, you can experiment and see what works with your track. But yeah, it's really going to depend on the sound you want to get. Yeah, so yeah, uh, basically for the hats, it's really, really simple. Uh, one more cool thing you can do with your hats is the uh, automation. So as you guys can see, I'm automating the reverb. So let's listen to the hats just in solo. And the same thing happens with the clap. So basically what I'm trying to do, uh, it's almost just the same concept. So let's say we have uh, some loop or just something that is playing and it looks something like this, right? So this is gonna be the, the loop. And if it looks just something like this, it's gonna be boring. And what we want to do, we want to add some, some automation and it can be something like like that, right? And the purpose of automation is to make the track more interesting because in track, we have not only the three dimensions like the, the width, the height, and the depth, we also have a time. And time is a really, really important thing and it's a thing that so many music producers forget about. And uh, this is gonna be the, uh, the automation. So uh, I hope it makes sense for you guys and you can really, really play around with different parameters. So for example, I'm automating the decay of the hat. You can automate the reverb, the filter cutoff, just anything. Anything is going to make your track more interesting and it's going to add more movement to your mix. All right, and the last thing is this uh, shaker and it sounds like this really basic thing but uh, one interesting thing about this shaker is that I'm quantizing it pretty pretty hard and as you guys can see I'm using the the groove pool so you can search for grooves here just pick the one you like and or you just want to like the uh, drag and drop it here and you want to quantize so if you listen to this loop this is with uh, with quantization and this is without the quantization. It's really just boring because it doesn't have the, the, the groove. And with the quantization, you can do things like, like this. All right, so uh, that was it with the drums. And now let's break down uh, the melodic elements in this track. And uh, it's the name of the genre just speaks for itself and it's minimal techno and it means that we don't have so many elements, although sometimes it might be a, a case and an option. So uh, the first thing is this pad, uh, just an atmospheric sound to, you know, add something to the background of the track. The next thing is this effects vocal sound. The next step is this op, and basically you can use any synthesizer. I'm using Diva, uh, uh, just picks a random preset. And what I've done here, uh, I've uh, applied our PGator, and you can play with the rate, with the speed of the arpeggio, but really just pick something and see what works. So let me play you uh, this one. We can do something like this.
So yeah, just play around and see what works. But basically, I'm just using like one note, basically just a drone. And with Arpeggio, you can do some pretty cool things in terms of like rhythm and some of the kinds of stuff. So yeah, that was it with the op. And the next thing is this fill. Uh, it's it has some kind of bluesy-ish vibe. Uh, Boris Brasher uses this a lot, uh, this kind of bluesy vibe. And uh, if you once you can copy the notes and it sounds like this, you can hear that bluesy kind of vibe. Sounds pretty, pretty cool. And uh, the last thing is this percussive lead. So basically it's doing uh, the same thing as uh, this this one I've had in the beginning, so this one. So we are trying to add uh, some kind of rhythm to our track. And uh, uh, let me play you this lead. So you can feel that uh, the the percussive effects sound and the main lead sound, they, they kind of like talk to each other, I would say. So. Like it's it's a call and response, and it's a really cool thing to have in your tracks when you have like uh, one lead playing. So uh, let me draw you, and it looks something like this. And then you have another one, which basically is the uh, the second part of the melody, right? So that is the purpose uh, of these. Yeah, I think that was everything. Let's play the track just one more time before we end the tutorial. So yeah, guys, that was everything for today. I hope that you like this tutorial. If you've learned something new, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash that thumbs up button under this video. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment below and also smash that nice notification bell uh, as it will help the channel to grow a lot. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. Don't forget about the free cheat sheet and I see you guys in the next one.